today we're gonna to talk all about the top trends of 2024. So I have been scouring social media and Pinterest and everything. I have chosen my top 10 favorite trends for the next year. This was something that I found myself looking for as I was trying to get dressed and looking for a little bit of guidance. So I hope that this is helpful. Welcome back to the August Diaries. My name is Jill. I am a style and beauty influencer. So the first trend that I wanna talk about is the color red. Now this has been huge throughout the fall and into the holidays, but I think that red will still be popular into the spring. It is something that I am loving wearing. I had this red sweater that I wore all the time throughout the fall and into the holidays as well. I will share some photos of it here. And I also wore it for my heritage jewelry collection photo shoot and I love how those turned out. I feel like the vibe is very 90s Ralph Lauren equestrian and that was exactly what I was going for and I just feel like the red really works. Red also looks so good with like a white t-shirt and jeans. There's something about that color combo. It just looks so crisp and like slightly preppy but still really cool and almost a little bit French. If you're not wanting to wear something as intense as like a red sweater or coat, you can also do red accessories like a red sneaker the red Adidas Gazelle is really big or go with something like a red bag, whether it's a clutch or a larger bag. This is a great way to add that color into your wardrobe. I know that people have been wearing the red tight trend, especially over the holidays, and I actually love it, although I'm pretty sure that I can't personally pull it off. I just don't love myself in tights. I don't know what it is. So the next trend is office core or basically just a great suit. The kind of more oversized proportion suit has gained popularity on the quote unquote cool girl and wearing an oversized suit with like sneakers and a t-shirt has become really cool. And I, for one, am so happy about that because I love a beautiful suit. And I also think that it's something that you really should have in your wardrobe. You basically have three ways of wearing a beautiful suit. You can wear it all together, whether it's like dressed up in a more business sense or dressed down with sneakers and a t-shirt and a hat, or you can wear the trousers separately with like a t-shirt and a sweater. And then lastly, you can wear the blazer on its own with like jeans, a maxi skirt, whatever. It just has so much versatility. A blazer or a suit is such a huge part of my everyday wardrobe. So I almost hesitate to call it a trend because it's just something that I wear all the time, but it is definitely something that will still be popular throughout the spring of 2024. And I think that the slightly oversized silhouette is still gonna be really popular. It's something that I really love. You don't necessarily have to go with the huge oversized shoulders and the huge baggy pants. You can do a little bit more of a slight oversized proportion. It just makes the suit look a little bit cooler. So for the next trend, I am a little bit triggered. As a millennial, low rise pants were such a huge part of my teenage years. Although we're not talking about the like one inch Dorina jeans that we used to wear. Thank God, if you know, you know. We're just talking about a lower rise. We're not talking about like low rise. Jennifer Lawrence recently wore a bit of a lower rise jean and she wore it with a belt and it was kind of a 90s vibe, but it looked really, really cool. So I feel like the rise is kind of slowly going down. As long as it doesn't go super, super low rise, then I'm fine. Although even with me making a trend video, I still feel like you should wear what you like and what looks good on you. By no means do you have to wear any of these. So when I say low rise, I mean something more like at your hip bone and I feel like they look really good with a belt and it just feels really fresh right now. While we're on the subject of bottoms, the baggier pant trend is still going to be big for 2024. I do see the silhouette going a little bit slimmer. It almost looks a little bit more like a vintage jean, something from the 90s, which again is very big, but we're definitely not going for the skinny leg from the 2010s, although I'm sure that will come back in a few years. The next trend is more 
more of a preppy kind of conservative vibe, very Ralph Lauren, a little bit equestrian. It was something that I really touched on for my heritage collection jewelry shoot, which I mentioned previously. I was super inspired by that. I loved the kind of layering that they did. There was a lot of plaid. There was some knit polo, which I think is a really cool and modern way to wear a polo. I mean, the classic white shirt is what its name says, a classic, but wearing that layered with a blazer and a sweater can also look really cool. And even though my husband calls me Kira Knightley from Love Actually, I do love the newsboy cap. I think it's so cute. The one that I'm wearing here is from Isabel Morant. I got it probably like eight years ago and it's something that I still really love. So moving on to the accessories trends, I think that the slouchy bag, which has slowly been coming back, is going to be really big for 2024. It doesn't necessarily have to be quite the proportion that it used to be. I used to have this huge but gorgeous cognac leather Juicy Couture bag. Oh my god, I'm totally dating myself with the Juicy Couture reference, but I should get it out because I still have it. It was this like huge kind of hobo-ish bag that you put on your shoulders and that was like a little bit slouchy. So a few years ago, Kate brought out their slouchy suede bag, which I love but can't afford. I feel like people have kind of taken that and and run with it over these last few years. And especially the suede slouch is really big. You don't necessarily have to go quite as large. The only thing about hobo bags that I hate is if there's no pockets and it's just this one huge bottomless pit where you lose everything in your purse. Digging through a hobo bag is the worst. So my only thing is that it has to have pockets so that you can have some organization. I almost can't believe I'm saying this, but the next trend is mixing metals. So silver jewelry is definitely having a resurgence. I don't know if I can quite get to the point where I'm solely wearing silver jewelry. That was something that I used to do probably almost 10 years ago. I used to wear all these silver rings and then I had these silver knuckle rings as well. Like I'm cringing thinking about it. I'm gonna insert some photos here, but I do really love the look of mixing metals. And I think that the old fashioned rule of not mixing metals is total bullshit. It just looks really effortless. The metals together look really cool. There are so many cool watches that use silver and gold. And I also think that buying a watch like that is really versatile because then you can wear mixed metals or silver or gold with your watch. The last trend for accessories is Python. So if you have been following me, you will know that I bought the Kate Python boots. That was my huge purchase for the year and I'm still so obsessed with them. I almost feel like Python is a neutral. It's just such a cool way of bringing in a print that's still in a very neutral color and it makes your outfit look much more interesting than wearing like a black boot or a brown boot. You can incorporate this with boots or shoes or with a bag. I am just obsessed with the Python. I think they are so good and I will obviously continue wearing wearing my cape boots. I need to get my dollars per wear out of them. The last two trends are beauty related. And the first one is the bang. Bangs are back. Last year I got a total hair makeover. I will link the video here. I ended up getting curtain bangs. These are a little bit longer than I had them a few months ago. I was really inspired by Suki Waterhouse and the kind of more 70s shag, but I feel like so many people are getting bangs, whether it's like more of a full on bang, a across your forehead or a curtain bang. There are so many ways that you can wear them and I've really been loving mine. My only tip is to know going in that they are definitely more high maintenance. I mean, I know it makes sense, but just be aware of that when you go in. You're gonna be blow drying your bangs every day. My bangs just do not look like this when I wake up at all. I definitely do not look like this when I wake up. As long as you're aware that this is a higher maintenance hairstyle, then you'll be good. Although the only thing that's a little bit lower maintenance about this is that you can kind of just wash and dry your bangs and it makes the rest of your hair look like you did the whole thing, even if you just like pull it back in a low bun. So that's a plus, but I'm definitely gonna keep the bangs for at least a few more months. And then, I don't know, maybe I'll chop it off into a bob for the summer. The last trend is more of an indie sleaze, grungy makeup look. As many of you know, the clean girl aesthetic has been really big for the past few years, very glowing and simple. And as the name says, clean. And I feel like we're doing a 
complete 180 and going into the more grunge or as they call it, indie sleaze trend. It's much more of a smudgy eye, not so much of a like perfect glowing skin, definitely not the kind of nudie overlined lips of before. It's almost like you went to a party with a slightly smoky eye and then slept in your makeup, but then you still look amazing the next day, which a lot of people do when they're 21 years old. I haven't worn the kind of like smudgy slept in look in a long time, but I do kind of love it. I think that pairing the smudgy eye with more of like a natural glowing skin, although different from the like perfect of the clean girl aesthetic will really make the look modern and doing kind of a, again, very natural, rosy, your lips but better color on your lips will also modernize the grungy indie sleaze look. Although I have to be honest, when I was a teenager, I would line my eyes in black coal and I have smaller eyes and it looks so bad on me. I will not be doing that, not flattering. I do have a tutorial on how to get my hair and then my makeup is pretty much my everyday makeup just with a wing. So I will link those in the description box if you're interested. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you soon.